all right uh, dear doctor so in this video we shall be looking at this another topic called osteo malaysia osteo malaysia the word osteo means related to bones and malaysia is generally used for softening now this is sometimes referred as adult onset rickets adult onset rickets now what it is it is a qualitative defect qualitative defect of bones in adults now what happens here is that the bones they have got a good volume normal volume but their mineralization is not adequate so bones the volume is okay volume is normal but the bone density is very low right the calcium uh, is not available in adequate quantities so that is why the bones are comparatively soft bones are comparatively weak as compared to a normal adult Now, when you compare it with another bone disease, which is prevalent in uh, adults, what is that? Osteoporosis. So, osteoporosis is both qualitative as well as quantitative defect. Right? See here, in osteoporosis, the bones they have got low volume. as well as low density whereas in osteomalacia the bone density definitely is low but the bone volume is normal bone volume is normal that's a major difference between osteomalacia and osteoporosis now this particular disease osteomalacia it is common when we compare the genders so it is comparatively common in females especially the females of developing countries females of developing countries why first you see developing countries the people are generally poor and not able to afford a good diet so their poor diet which is low in calcium and vitamin d and second is females they remain covered they remain covered from head to toe right so there is lack of sun exposure body will not get vitamin d either from the diet or from sun exposure so that is why it is common in the females of developing countries now it is common in a sub group because you see there are certain drugs there are certain drugs which interfere with vitamin d metabolism interfere with vitamin d metabolism now if your patient is taking any of these drugs for long term he or she potentially can develop vitamin d deficiency fine so some of the important drugs here are anti convulsant anti convulsant drugs like phenytoin phenobarbitol or carbamazepine so if any of these patients who is taking these drugs come to you with the clinical features of rickets like uh, multiple joint pains muscle aches do consider the possibility of development of osteomalacia 
Then the other uh, drugs here are those drugs which interfere with cholesterol metabolism like ifosamide, cholestyramine, cholestyramine. Third, in developing countries, in underdeveloped countries, poor uh, countries, what happens is tuberculosis is very common. So ATT, drugs in the anti-tubercular therapy, for example, rifampicin, that also interferes with vitamin D metabolism. Okay, then phosphate containing or phosphate, sorry, phosphate binding antacids phosphate binding antacids they also interfere with the calcium and phosphate metabolism glucocorticoids so if your patient is on steroid for example your patient is suffering from inflammatory bowel disease your patient is suffering from rheumatoid arthritis you may have to put your patient on long-term steroids so these patients definitely can develop uh, osteomalacia they can definitely develop the deficiency of vitamin d and calcium Let's see what are the different clinical features and what do you get to see on x-ray. So first, you see your patient will have polyarthralgia, multiple joint pains. Your patient can have low back ache. You see the spine. The vertebral column is weak and is not able to support the weight of body. Polymyalgia, right? And then you see the X-ray of your patient may show you, X-ray of the patients may show you typical finding which is called as milkman fracture. Now they are also called as pseudo fracture. They are also called as pseudo fractures. Now you see here. So most commonly they are seen in the lower limbs, lower limbs. So, if they ask you this question, what is the most common site? The most common site is neck of femur. Neck of femur. So, lower limb, commonly they are present and the most common site is neck of femur. Because you see the bones are very, very soft. So, even a pulsating blood vessel, you know, blood vessel which is pulsating, it has got blood at very high pressure it can cause these fractures so they are thought to result due to pressure from pulsating blood vessels pulsating blood vessels on the soft bones on the soft bones right pseudo fracture also called as milkman fracture now they are also seen at the uh, edge of scapula and at ribs when we talk about the upper limb Now another uh, important x-ray finding what you see that is called as triradiate 
pelvis tri radiate pelvis now it is also called as otto pelvis and protrusio acetabuli see entire weight of the body is on the hip joint like this that means at the pelvis but even if you know entire weight of the body is on the pelvis a normal pelvis has got strong bones so it will retain its shape very well but if the bones are weak if the bones are soft in that case the pelvis will be easily deformed right so it will develop something like this moving into three directions now this kind of pelvis this kind of pelvis is called as tri tri means three radiate pelvis this is called as tri radiate pelvis tri radiate pelvis Now, when we speak about the other investigation, for example, we get the blood investigations done. When we talk about the blood investigations, here you see the phosphate levels, the vitamin D levels, they are definitely low, but calcium level once again they are low transiently that means for a short while or may even be normal may even be normal right when we talk about the serum alkaline phosphatase levels they are high because you see whatever bone is broken that has to be repaired whatever bone is still not mineralized calcium is not deposited calcium has to be deposited at that bone so that is why the alkaline phosphatase levels would be high again you see because the patient is not uh, able to absorb calcium from the diet so blood calcium level will declines transiently for a short while now when the blood calcium level decline the levels of parathyroid hormone they increase they are elevated they are elevated right <laughs> But they say what is confirmatory investigation? What is confirmatory investigation? We are continuing with the topic of investigation. What is confirmatory investigation? Confirmatory investigation happens to be transiliac bone biopsy. So from the ileum bone, we'll take bone biopsy what does it shows it shows wide seams of bone that means it will show decrease bone density decrease bone density treatment again has to be the same you will give your patient six lakh international units intramuscular intramuscular fine that has to be given once start or you can give your patient 60,000 international units every week oral form and that has to be given for 8 to 10 weeks now you don't have to stop here this should definitely be followed by 2 to 10,000 international units per day 
fine now that depends for how long you need to give six to eight weeks is the general is the common time for which we give our patient vitamin d of course you have to give your patient sufficient uh, quantities of oral calcium now there is another question which they commonly ask what is the prophylactic dose let's say if your patient has just started taking anticonvulsant drugs so in due course of time your patient definitely will develop vitamin d deficiency in that case the prophylactic dose minimum is 800 international units per day if you don't give your patient this much vitamin d there are many chances that your patient will develop osteomalacia right so that was uh, practically all about osteomalacia now in the next video we'll read about another bone disorder in adults that is osteoporosis right thank you